To power on the detector, simply press the power button. To power off, press the power button and hold for about one second until you hear that second beep. To restore your detector to factory settings, simply press and hold the power button for about five seconds. When you hear that double beep, you'll also notice that it has switched to coins mode, which is the factory default setting. The AT Max includes a built-in Z-Link wireless transmitter for use with these Garrett MS3 headphones. The AT Max can also connect to most any other headphones with the use of a separate Z-Link receiver. To pair with a new set of headphones, simply switch the headphone receiver on, hold the receiver within two feet or a half meter from the AT Max, and then press and release the iron audio and frequency buttons at the same time. A steady Z-Link wireless icon indicates that the detector is properly paired. A flashing icon indicates the detector is searching for a receiver. Absence of the icon indicates the AT Max is not connected to a receiver. If your AT Max loses connection with your receiver, simply switch the detector off and back on again. Should you wish to unpair a set of headphones, simply press the iron audio and frequency buttons simultaneously while the wireless icon on the AT Max is steady. The AT Max can be operated wirelessly for shallow waiting but wireless operation is not possible when the detector is fully submerged. Optional, hardwired headphones are required when the AT Max will be fully submerged. Your AT Max International will indicate all targets you encounter in the field, so it's important that you understand target ID. Let's take a look at that. The AT Max's target ID includes the legend up at the top. Ferrous or iron items indicate more toward the left side. Non-ferrous or more conductive items are going to be more toward the right. This lower scale indicates all the pixels that are switched on that are active. These pixels that have been turned off on this side have been rejected. Although you will see a target ID cursor appear along the top row it will be audible only if it's accepted. If it's rejected, it will not be audible, but you will see the cursor. So I've got a target on the ground here. We'll go over this coin here and you'll see what I'm talking about. You can hear the audio and you can see the target ID cursor at the top. That pixel indicates the probable target identity. This digital target ID is a more precise value of the ID cursor it corresponds with on the upper scale. Notice that the depth is indicated in five centimeter increments. So this target is indicating to be about 15 centimeters deep. It is important to note that this depth indicator is calibrated toward coin sized objects. On depth indication, items that are very tiny, much smaller than a coin, may actually be sitting shallower than what is indicated. Conversely, items that are very large, much larger than a coin, may actually be deeper in the ground than what is shown. Remember that the depth indicator is based on coin-sized objects. It's also important to note several things regarding digital target ID. First, get your target centered under your coil. Pinpoint it as best you can. If you keep your target very well centered and keep your coil swing very level, very flat above the target, you will get a more precise target ID. Use the mode button to scroll between the AT Max's four detection modes, a true all metal mode and three discrimination modes. All metal mode provides the greatest detection depth and sensitivity. Its continuous audio response allows the operator to hear subtle detection signals produced by faint targets. Since the all-metal mode contains no discrimination, all types of metal will be detected. In custom mode, you can save your own discrimination pattern.
and the AT Max will remember it when you turn it off and back on again. Coins mode is designed to find most types of coins and jewelry and eliminate common trash like foil and iron. Be aware that some small items that respond like foil could be missed with this pattern. In the zero discrimination mode, nothing is notched. All 12 discrimination pixels are active. Use this mode when a target signal is inconsistent or when you don't know exactly what type of metal you're looking for. When used in any of its three discrim modes, custom, coins, or zero, the AT Max has three distinct tones it makes based on a target's conductivity. So I've got three targets laid out here on the ground. Let's go over those targets and listen to these three different tones. The first tone is a low tone. That's for anything with a digital target ID reading from zero to 34. Listen to the low tone created by this iron nail. A mid-tone is produced for items with digital target IDs from 35 to 50. Listen to this piece of foil in the mid-tone. Finally, a high tone is heard for anything with a target ID higher than 50. Listen to the silver coin and the high tone it produces. Let's go over the three targets once again. High tone, mid-tone, low tone. If you are operating in the true all-metal mode on the AT Max, you will hear all targets as a proportional medium tone. The only way to hear another tone in the all-metal mode is to use all-metal iron audio. So let's look at iron audio both in the all-metal mode and in the discrim modes. Garrett's iron audio feature helps you avoid digging tricky flat iron objects such as washers and bottle caps, which are often the nemesis of coin diggers. I'll use this bottle cap here. I'll place it on the ground and I'll use the iron audio and show how it works both in discrim and all metal modes. I'll start in one of the discrim modes, zero mode, with my iron disc setting at zero. No metal is being discriminated. When I pass the search coil over this bottle cap, you can hear that it makes a pretty good signal. It's a fairly high reading, probably something I would dig. Iron Audio lets you check a target like this for iron content, but you must have some iron discrimination in place in order for Iron Audio to be functional. So let's run up some iron discrim in order to check this target. In this case, I'll run it up to 35. Check the target again. Even with my iron discrim at 35, the target still sounds pretty good. But push the iron audio button. You'll see the words iron audio on the display when the feature is active. And check it again. There's some flanking iron sounds. If I'm dead centered on it, it still sounds okay. But as I'm coming and going, I can hear that iron grunt on either side of the target. The iron audio function also works in the all metal mode, which is a feature exclusive to Garrett. To demonstrate, I'll scan this iron nail. Now I push the iron audio button and run my iron disc up to 33. It's important to remember that iron audio must be switched on first in order to set iron discrimination in the all metal mode. With your discrim set, switch iron audio back off and pass the coil over the nail. Listen to the clean mid-tone response, which sounds like a good target. Now, switch iron audio on and listen to the nail again. It has a distinctive low, medium, low response that is unmistakably a discriminated iron target. The iron audio feature is recommended in the all metal mode to check targets for iron content. Iron discrim settings made in the all metal mode are temporary. They will not be retained when the detector is turned off.
The AT Max has 12 pixels or notches of discrimination that can be switched off to eliminate trash objects from detection, such as foil or pull tabs. There are two different methods to eliminate an item from detection. Let me demonstrate with this pull tab that I have here. I scan over it and get a reading around 60. To manually eliminate this target from detection, first press the shift button to enter the secondary functions, and then use the notch disc plus or minus buttons to move the upper cursor to the notch you wish to eliminate. Then push the elim button to remove the lower scale pixel that corresponds with this target. When I scan back over the pull tab, it is now usually silent, although the target ID cursor still indicates its presence. If necessary to completely silence a junk target, I may have to remove one more notch on either side of it. To add a target ID cursor back into your detection pattern, press the shift button, use the notch disc plus or minus buttons to move the upper cursor to the desired pixel, and then press a limb again. I can also remove a target from audible detection as I encounter it. While swinging over this junk target, I can press the shift button and then quickly push the alim button to remove the pixel that is currently active. On the AT Max, you can adjust iron discrimination from zero, no discrimination of iron, to 44, maximum iron discrimination. Use the iron disc plus or minus buttons to set your iron discrim level to where an unwanted ferrous target is just rejected. Using minimal levels of iron discrimination will help you avoid missing a good target that is being masked by iron trash. First, set your MS3 Z-Link wireless headphones to the maximum volume level. To further control the loudness of target sounds as you search, press the shift button and use the plus or minus volume adjust buttons to set to your preference. Threshold is the constant background hum that is added to the target response. Use the threshold plus or minus buttons to select from one of 33 levels. To maximize the ability to hear faint target signals, it is recommended to operate with a faint yet barely audible threshold. The louder your surrounding environment, the higher you may need to set the threshold. At other times, you may wish to operate with a negative or silent threshold to reduce detector chatter. Headphones are highly recommended in order to hear faint signals. There are four minor frequency adjustments to use in order to minimize interference caused by electrical sources or by other metal detectors. Press the frequency button once to view your current setting. Then continue to press this button to find the frequency that provides the least amount of interference. Use these plus or minus buttons to step through the eight levels of sensitivity. Increase sensitivity when you're searching for a very small item or a very deep item. Other times you may want to decrease sensitivity when the machine is behaving erratically due to excessive metal trash or highly mineralized grounds. The AT Max includes a backlight for improved visibility of the screen in low light situations. Press the shift button, then push the light button to switch the LCD backlight on or off. <laughs> 